As a businessman and real estate developer, I have legally used the tax laws to my benefit. People have been guessing about Donald Trump's mind and attitude for a long time because of the loud, hostile, boisterous, and self-promotional way he led as a president of the United States. In particular, a lot of people wonder if his need for constant praise, lack of empathy, and refusal to admit when he's wrong or imperfect are signs of, I'm going to say the word, narcissism. Did I offend you? Is this true or not? What are your thoughts? A professional evaluation and diagnosis is needed to make a final diagnosis of any mental health condition. However, there is a lot of study on narcissistic behaviors that we can use to make better judgments about his actions and also his personality. We will not make any kind of direct accusations in this investigation, okay? Instead, I'll be comparing actions seen by the public to clinical criteria. Again, I'm not a professional, but with some of the research that I've done, this is going to be some interesting information. So definitely watch until the end of this video because it's going to provide some interesting insight. That's my hope. The goal is not to blame, but to start a serious conversation about how narcissism affects leadership. So stick around to the end because I'll be talking about whether Trump is a narcissist or not based on his actions and professional opinions. Background on Narcissistic Personality Disorder So according to the National Library of Medicine, Narcissistic Personality Disorder involves an enduring pattern of thinking very highly of oneself, fantasizing about fame and success, exaggerating one's importance, craving constant praise and attention, and displaying behaviors characterized by lack of empathy or a willingness to manipulate and take advantage of others for personal gain. Different degrees exist, right? From mild narcissism to full personality disorder. It's a huge range. Key symptoms in what professionals evaluate include the following. One, is Grandoy's sense of self-importance and preoccupation with success and power. Two, believing oneself to be uniquely superior and deserving of special treatment. Three, obsession with outward perceptions of success via beauty, achievement, and intelligence. And four, inability to recognize other people's perspectives or emotions. Now, We'll be exploring examples of how Donald Trump exhibited some patterns of speaking and behavior that align with clinical narcissistic symptoms during his term as President of the United States of America. Grandiose sense of self-importance. Trump possesses an extensively documented record of making grandiose claims about his importance, success, and talents. This tendency did not merely emerge during his political aspirations. Back in, way back in 2024, this is what Trump tweeted. Deals are my art form. Other people paint beautifully or write poetry. I like making deals, preferably big deals. That's how I get my kicks. The tweet somehow shows how great he thinks he is in his business. Now, me personally, I think that's just confidence, but in different research and online articles out there, people are saying that this is more of him being narcissistic. During his candidacy, Trump said, I understand the tax laws better than almost anyone, which is why I am one who can truly fix them. I understand it. I get it though he has not authored any tax policies. Most relevantly, despite a lack of political experience, 
Trump claimed he alone could fix Washington's dysfunction and tackle America's most significant problems through deal-making and leadership brilliance. He likes claiming that he knows about everything more than others do. Craving constant admiration. Trump's tendency for self-admiration hints at profound insecurity and an insatiable desire for legitimization through external praise. As President of the United States, Trump averaged one political rally every five days, using these frequently to bask in fan adoration rather than promote specific policies. He publicly obsesses over TV ratings, suggesting they represent the mass popularity of his governance. Trump artificially inflates impressions of his support by fabricating claims like, quote, the crowds are unbelievable, unquote, at his 2017 inauguration, despite photographic evidence disproving this. Exploiting others, lack of empathy. Many examples of Trump's displays of indifference to suffering include severely cutting human humanitarian aid abroad, insulting excluded groups, showing disinterest in climate change victims worldwide, and refusing responsibility for mismanaging America's pandemic response, which killed over 400,000 citizens. Again, this is research on the web. You can validate this if you'd like. Trump's lengthy business career includes numerous lawsuits alleging contractors and employees not receiving payment for work delivered to Trump's benefit. Throughout his presidency, turnover among senior administration officials neared 100%, suggesting poor management skills. Trump prioritized personal electoral gain in attempting to pressure Ukraine into launching a sham corruption investigation against the son of his chief political rival, Joe Biden, based on conspiracy theories. This displayed a willingness to undermine national strategic interests for personal advancement goals. Public perception as a narcissist. Widespread perceptions across different groups sees Donald Trump as highly narcissistic. Over 350 mental health professionals signed a petition warning against his grave emotional instability, including unpredictability, reckless behavior, and lying, indicative of narcissistic disorder enabling unfit leadership. However, there is a Something called the Goldwater Rule, which prohibits psychiatrists from diagnosing a public individual without assessing them in person. So that is why even though many psychiatrists claim Trump has mental health issues, the government has not taken this much of it's, 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 it's worthless. Those signatures are worthless. Due to this, many people said that the rule should be updated. Yeah, it makes sense, I guess. In line with this, Dr. John D. Mayer, a known psychologist, said this, quote, there's another perspective uh, on this altogether. The ethicists who wrote the rule have been entirely focused on the negative side of commentaries. But there's a positive adaptive side to every personality trait. If you call someone deceitful, whether Clinton or Trump, it needs to be said like that. For a good politician, there's a reasons you can't always say everything you know or exactly what you think. So let's take a step back. Clinton or Trump? Didn't both lie? Weren't both deceptive? One might be a little bit more than another, but come on, let's think about this a little bit. So in conclusion, there remains an imperative for mental health professionals to avoid long distance diagnosis. Moreover, certain strengths often accompany narcissistic type thinking like self-assuredness, persistence, and vision. However, Donald Trump's lifelong behavioral problems, business dealings, and political leadership style demonstrates clear alignment with many symptoms classically associated with pathological narcissism, obsession with public, intensely fragile self-esteem, lack of empathy, difficulties collaborating, and a tendency to manipulate people. At the same time, Trump may well have other concurrent diagnosis or medical factors influencing his psychology. The cumulative, cumulative indicators point strongly towards narcissism as a major um, explanation for Trump's more damaging, confusing, or shocking actions. As the United States continues uh, reckoning with the impacts of Donald Trump's presidency, positive or negative, 
Coming to terms with Trump's likely disordered psychology provides one helpful frame for making sense of his behaviors. Rather than being accusatory, such perspective taking can foster collective healing. Though ultimately perfection lies beyond human grasp, wisdom often begins from first acknowledging and thus compassionately accounting for our underlying limitations. I would love to hear your comments. Write them down below. I would love to hear from you. Please like and subscribe for more videos like this one.